to the Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, the Word of God, and how to incorporate it into our daily lives. Passion Tide. Passion Tide. This is the last two weeks of Lent. Mm -hmm. Now flip gears and we begin to move towards the Passion. So it's like the season of the Passion. So right. Passion Tide really means. So in, in many places, like at St. Charles Borromeo, uh, you will come in and find all of the statues, crosses, images covered from sight. So we kind of enter into this period of death and dying where the glory of the Lord is is t hidden from our faces. Yeah, we, it's a more somber. It definitely is. You get the sense that we are, we are dying at the end of Lent so that when the resurrection comes. So there's definitely a different feel. Yeah. In the church, which you know, it's a good thing. The environment helps, right? No, and it's it's. I think I think it is helpful that when the environment mimics what the church is trying to guide us through. That's right. It just reflects. So just like last week, Laetare Sunday with all of the rose and the flowers right. and the music, and then <laughs> 180 degree turn. It's all been taken away, but not the word of God. So let's dive into the Old Testament. All right, Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet. This, you know, if you're not paying attention, you may not know exactly what's going on here. I had to, like, do some back reading here to figure this one out, Jonathan. Yeah, so I... what's going on in the story? <laughs> do you know? I Or at least tell so. us what Isaiah is saying. Okay, well, Isaiah is saying that God is still there, basically, because everything is in shambles. Everything is a really tough time for, for the people. Um, and he says, you know, in the past, God has done all of these great things. Yep. And he and specifically he's, describes the exodus. Yes. He's talking about part of the waters, the chariots and charioteers were wiped out. Right. And he continues on by saying, but don't be looking to the past. Don't look at the past. As if that was the only time God did things. Right. That God is is still doing good and he's still right. at work among us and in fact he's going to do better than that right so i think that's ultimately because we're really talking about the end of the babylonian exile here mm -hmm. and so as the people are going to be leaving babylon and moving back into the promised land it's going to be like a greater joy than when the israelites first left egypt in the exodus so, yeah, it's like you, if you keep looking back to the past, you don't see what God is doing in the present. Mm -hmm. Like, why aren't you acting like that? Why don't you do big things like that? And that's so much us in our daily lives. Uh, yeah, it is. You know, it's anytime we face any kind of hardship, I think that's the, the trust in God is one of the first things to go. It's like, why, why now? Why are you helping those people? You're not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. And then where, where are you in my life? And I think... He's trying to remind them that he's still there, and he has even greater things, like you said. Keep in focused. Store. Keep focused on what's happening right here in front of you. Okay, uh, which then leads us to our psalm: "The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy." Absolutely. Even though we're in this, you know, the deadening of Lent, as it were, entering into Passion Tide, we're about to see great things. Right. The Lord has done and continues to do great things for us. So we are filled with joy. I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah, Let's go to Philippians. Philippians. St. Paul, lots of words. Lots of words. There's the, yeah, the readings, you know, this is one of those Sundays where most of the time during Lent, the first reading, the second reading, and the gospel have all been a clean flow into whatever it is that they were about. This week, not so much. No, St. Paul is... Saying rubbish, almost you know, but it's not rubbish. He's he's talking about the earthly things and the things that you gain in this world, and how when compared to what he was received in Christ already, and compared to what he is still to receive right. in his pursuit of Christ, they mean nothing. They are everything garbage. here is just nothing. Yeah, yeah. and so it, you really, I had to read it a couple times to really say like, okay, so what's going on here? He's comparing life in Christ to what the rewards of life in Christ to rewards of life in the world. Exactly. And, and he's doing a little reminiscing, I think, of his own conversion story. He wrote this about 20 years after his conversion. 
So it's like, you know, he says, once I found Christ, everything that I thought was a gain or that I considered to be great, I now consider actually it was a stumbling stone for me. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's, you know, something like you, you think that you've got all kinds of greatness and good things and then you realize, oh, I'm supposed to be over there and I'm over here. Well, every step I took was not a, a, a promotion or a step forward, but it was a step away from where I should have been. Right. And so Paul is like reevaluating and, and sharing with folks, we've got to reevaluate. See where you're going. See where Christ is leading you. Yeah. What are you pursuing? And what is that going to lead you to? I guess this kind of ties to that first reading in the sense of looking back and looking forward. It does. That if you keep looking back, you're going to miss what's in front of you. And Paul says, you know, I look back and I leave it there because I am now living for Christ and his resurrection. So there's a, again, it's a, I'm turning and becoming something new. Jonathan, what the heck just happened? We had an issue with the video, and the second the gospel part got corrupted. Yeah, we are so. technical difficulties. So here we are now in my office, and we're going to continue our conversation from here. So we're going into the gospel. Gospel. John. We're in John's gospel. It's a very interesting gospel. What's going on in this gospel, Jonathan? So we've heard that many versions of this in the past. There, It's been depicted in movies and things. Um, it's the woman caught in adultery. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. So Jesus is sitting there on the ground, and this crowd comes, and they throw this woman in front of him right. and accuse her. We caught her in the very act of adultery. The law says we should stone her. What are we to do? He kind of just keeps writing. <laughs> he doesn't do much. <laughs> well, and, that's just, and that's the thing. He's writing in the sand. So, you know, there's a couple of interesting points here, Jonathan. First of all, the law says that if someone is caught in the act of adultery, they are to be put to death. The law is specific that says a, a, a betrothed woman caught in adultery is to be stoned to death. Really? Yeah, so that adds okay. just another wrinkle here so that we know this woman, she must be, it's not like she's a harlot or anything, but this woman is someone who's engaged and probably very similar to the situation that the Virgin Mary was in. Not mm. that the Virgin Mary was adulterous, but that Mary was with child while she was betrothed. And Joseph then had to wrestle, do I have her stoned to death or not? And so it's that law that they're referring to. Interesting. It is. And so as you said, Jesus is writing in the sand. Yeah. And we don't know what he's writing. No, nope, they never say. No, they know. There's a lot of you know thinking about what uh, what what he could be saying, what he could be doing. The only place in Scripture that it ever talks about writing in the earth, there's an obscure line in the Old Testament that talks about um, the 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 sins or the offenses being written in the earth. Mm. So Jesus may very well have been writing the sins of the people around him in the earth, which they could, may have seen. And so when he says, let ye without sin be the first to cast the stone, and he's writing, Jonathan, liar. Y you know, who knows? Who knows? We don't know. In any case, they bring him, and um, this whole situation resolves itself rather beautifully. Yeah, because, you know, slowly but surely, they all leave. They do. And the, because he says, let the one who is without sin cast the first right. stone. And as we all know, we're all broken. We all sin. <laughs> so it's not. I can't um, be. The law said that the first person to throw the stone was to be the one who witnessed the act. Oh, well, if you're witnessing the act, you were probably there. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> were you participating in the sin? I mean, it is a little like, how does one witness that? Who Anyway, so... They all leave, and here she is before the Lord. Yeah, and she gets done crying or wailing, just terrified. You got to imagine she's, in, you know, she's just been thrown in front of everybody right. in this horrible situation. Um, and asked Jesus, "What? Where did everybody go?" And he asked her that. Oh, he asked her that. He asked her that. He well, asked where her. are your accusers? There are none here. Go and sin no more. Yeah, go and sin no more, because they, he said they don't. They, they don't condemn you, and neither I will condemn you. 
Um, yeah. And that's just showing his great love and mercy. And to go and sin no more, which is brings us to confession. Absolutely. And what we are called to do every time we go to confession. Yeah. I, I mean, as we look at the, the way these readings unfold and how they're all connected together, that, that being the new person, not looking back to the past, mm-hmm. like this is what Jesus is saying to her. Okay, that was your old self. Let's not go back there now. Go and live as a new person. So I guess, you know, in talking all of this out, we figured out like how these readings right. all come together. Right. That don't look to the past. The old self is dead. Be a new person. Live in Christ. Um, and have new life. And ab- live it abundantly. Turn and sin no more. All right, Jonathan. I think we are ready to move into this weekend. All right. We'll see you uh, for the fifth Sunday. Oh, one more thing. We didn't mention at the beginning. Right. This is the third scrutiny of the elect. So you may go to a mass with the RCIA present, and you're going to hear a whole different set of readings. Uh, it's the raising of Lazarus from the dead. So that will be the readings you hear there. At St. Charles, that is Saturday night at 5 p.m. Otherwise, the readings that we just shared, that's the normal fifth Sunday of Lent readings. All right, see you then.